Family, salam alaikum, shalom, hotep, peace be with you. I feel like I'm always in some way in lab operation mode because I'm always, you know, thinking of things that could be done, things that could be improved, you know, things that, that need fixed, things that, you know, uh, need removed. And every day is, I'm, I'm like mentally in a laboratory. You understand? I'm, I'm mentally, like, you know, uh, on deck as a, um, you know, like an engineer or something. You know, just every day, every day. Every time I hear something, you know, I mean, I sometimes, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with a painting on my mind. I got to get up and boom, paint it, paint it, paint, 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 hurry up, you know, or a thought or a, a concept or, a, a, you know, eureka moment. And I gotta hurry up and get up and write. Sometimes, it, you know, amazing, you know, visions come, you know, dreams, all kinds of stuff come. And I have to, I'm like, whoa, whoa. Then I get up, write it all out. Sometimes it'd be pages after pages just from one dream in detail, you know, where I could, like, a, you know, have a, a panoramic, you know, view of things. It gets pretty interesting sometimes, you know, whole songs, whole, Whole songs, you know, this that that one million strong happened like that. That's how that happened. I, I was laying there in my bed, just like, mm, okay, you know, just, and then all of a sudden, boom, the lyrics, everything, the whole, the whole, the whole nine. I just woke up. It's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta hurry up and do this before before I lose it. Because I could have just laid there like, oh, it's, that, that's 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 deep. <laughs> that sounds cool, you know. It'd be nice to that'd be nice to do. Then it would have been a forgotten thought. But I had to get up and, and manifest it. That's what that's with anything, you know. Once once you hold once you have a vision, you have to hold on to it by the skin of your teeth because no one else is going to hold on to your vision for you. You can you can you can tell them your tale, but they're not going to see it as passionately as you might see it. That's the way visions go, you know. These these are our this these are our, our direct communications to the divine. Your visions. 
And, you know, if you ignore those, you're basically telling the divine higher self, the divine self, quiet, <laughs> no noise, you know. How, how are you going to tell the divine self to shut up? And you trying to figure things out, you trying to, you trying to make your way. But you telling the divine voice to, to, to keep quiet. It can't be like that, but we do that all the time. You know, the children have a better edge on us than, than, than that because they let it come naturally. They don't argue with the divine voice. They'll sit there and call, they'll call, they'll call out something evil with no hesitation. They won't bite their tongue or anything. They'll sit there and be like, you know, that's a bad man, or that's a, <laughs> you know, they'll sit there like, you're like, where'd you, what, what, why, why does she think he's a bad man? What, what, what do you see that I don't see? You know, I mean, that's just the way, you know, when we get, get older, we start getting egos about ourselves. So we bite our tongue. We're trying to impress somebody. We're trying to, you know, make some, you know, some type of gesture or some sort in society. So we don't always say what needs to be said. And we, and we don't always respond and react, you know, to things. I was thinking about that because my, my daughter is responding to her nature. Her na she's sitting there. If she smells like a fragrance or something, she'll just sit there and smell it and smell it. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you smelling? You're, she's just smelling away, just, you know, over her nose. So if you, if you give her some food or something, if, if it's new to her, she'll smell it like, what is this? Stuff that we take for granted. You know, we sit there in, in the same piece of food, we just toss it right in the mouth like, ah. Just toss it right in like a puppet, you know, how they have them big old mouths and cookie or mustard back in the days, you know, cookie mustard sit there, you know, that's how we are. But she'll look at that same food like, wait a minute, what, what is this? What does it smell like? Does it smell like it's meant to be eaten? You know, and she'll smell it. If it don't smell right, she'll put it to the side like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to eat that. It don't smell like it's supposed to be eaten. I'm still kind of that way with certain things. If, if food doesn't look like it was designed to be eaten in some way, you know, I just leave it alone. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not one of those that like food that looks back at me, for example. You know, if it's looking back like, whoa, you, you, you got to cut the eyes off or something, you know, because that's it's, it's still got eyes, you know. Somebody sit there, and, you know, in, in um, Africa, um, when they cook the food, when they cook the fish, sometimes they'll put it in like a wrap. And they'll put it right there on the grill. They don't cut the head off or anything. Yes, indeed. Shalom, beloved black family. They, they don't cut the head off or anything. They just put it right there on the grill. The eyes are all just, you got this eye looking at it. <laughs> I'm, like, no, I'm going to leave that fish right there alone. I'll eat fish. I love fish. But you just just cut, cut that part off and do something else with that. Some people will sit there and just slam on that. Just that part alone. Have fun. Have fun with it. So, anyway, you know, I'm just, uh, you have to, you have to stay tapped into the spiritual energy, the spiritual flow. You have to, you have to, the, from the earth, you know, as above, so, so below, you have to st st keep, remain tapped into the earthly energies, the heavenly energies, you understand? There has to be a balance. You have to always be tuned to that divine communication. Don't let your iPhone be the only thing that's tuned to to um, external communications. You understand? Don't don't you know? I, I used to tell people back in the days. You know, we have our we had the TVs with the with the antennas. Now you have dishes and whatnot. But you got to realize what, what's going on there. You know, there's radio waves in the air that the antennas are picking up. And then those radio waves are being reinterpreted into the TV or the device. And then you see these images at certain resolutions and frames per second. But I'm thinking to myself, well, all this information is being picked up in the air by this box. What about your dome? <laughs> Think about how much radio, how much energy is going through your dome that you could be tapped into that you don't because you shut it down because, oh, well, that's just make, that's just a dream. That's just you know, that's just, why, why do you have the capacity to imagine anyway? Why can you envision? How can, why can you, why do you have insight? All those things. These are all functions that connect us with the universe. And if you shut those doors, you, you might as well sit like a rock because that's all you're worth. That's all you're worth. You're not connected anymore. Just sit, just go find a place and sit down and blend in with, with the, with the rocks and stones. Even they're doing better than you because they still have their natural vibrations going on. 
vibrations. Oh man. That's a whole nother talk all, all, all by there. I'll, I'll have to deal with that some other time. But, you know, suffice it to say here, even even the sound that you make, that you produce out your mouth has a certain vibration. Everything that you, that's around you, all if it, whether it be light, sound, you name it, everything is vibrating at different frequencies. You don't have to take my word for it. You, you, could, you could just take different instruments. You could take um, talk, take take a glass. Uh, it'll fill it with like just about that much water, put it in the refrigerator and talk to the glass. Say something like in, enraged, right? And then look at how the glass, the, 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 um, there's like a little bit of a thin layer that'll freeze and it'll form based upon the shape of your sound. You understand? Like the aggressiveness or the passiveness. If you say something very soft and sweet, It'll form a shape. This is the, this is crystals that are doing this. this is the ice crystals. So if ice crystals are responding to your positive energy and your negative energy, what do you think about all other kinds of sounds that that go on around the world? That you're that I mean, most importantly, how do you think that's affecting your heart and your mind? Because your brain has chemical components in it. Your brain has uh, certain fluids in it that formulate based upon vibrations. Oh man. <laughs> this is this oh uh, yeah. It's that's a whole big book all by itself, black family. That's a whole big book. All I'm saying is we need to make sure that we're tuned in to positive vibrations, natural vibrations, higher vibrations, elevating vibrations, motivating vibrations, unifying vibrations. Those are the frequencies we need to be on. And stay in tune with. Leave alone the dust dwellers. Leave them alone. They want to wallow, wallow around in the mud and murk. Let them do that. It's in their nature. Why are you surprised? You surprised when swine squeal? You surprised when a dog barks and a cat meows? Are you surprised? Leave alone the dust dwellers, black family. We got a mission. We got an agenda. We got an objective to fulfill. Let there be no fear. Let there be no no disparity. You understand? Higher vibrations, higher frequencies. <laughs> yeah, yes indeed. Yes indeed. You'd be surprised. It makes you wonder sometimes when you get these huge, enormous storms that show up. Like what what's really behind those big old storms? Because you gotta remember some of these storms start way back in Africa. Think about that. You get these huge hurricane seasons that come over here, but the storms start up somewhere in the desert, somewhere in Africa. A little then it starts building up and you get the butterfly effect and by the time it gets here it's enraged like like you you took my my descendants from me you took took the seeds from me ah <laughs> you know i mean that's that's just how it goes you know it, 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 storms don't just pop up out of the nowhere they have the, the beginning point and if you understand how currents and whatnot flows you see that the majority of the currents that ever hit the the, the um east coast of the u.s start from africa most of these storms, most of the hurricanes that you ever see reported, they had their origin in Africa. Not the, at the, not at the coastal line, but deep in the heartland. The, the, the currents, the, the wind currents and whatnot started in Africa. So what I'm saying here, if you understand how vibrations work, I mean, as far as you know, there may have been some little boy there somewhere who, you know, has memories of his ancestors just being ravaged and and, and, and and massacred and he's sitting there just a little side and then that little side just starts you know that the energy that comes from that that's from within his inner being starts just spinning around that by the time it gets to the, the uh, to the uh, Atlantic Ocean it starts to build up and rage up like rawr, rawr. and it, as soon as it gets over here to the to the Carolinas and the the uh, the, 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 the the Long Island and all then it's already full-fledged mad and rage it's lots of you know re, you know vengeance coming at coming at us peace be with you yes indeed peace and blessings anyway you know i just wanted to share share you know that little tidbit you know about vibrations and 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 and, and, and energy you know frequencies um there's a lot more on that there's a lot more that that carries out with you know why we need to be in tune with one another so much so that I could sit here like this in complete silence and all those on the same frequency would, would, would still be a communication going on. They would still be able to connect with what's being said 
in unspoken words. The pain that nobody sees. The love that, 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 that's unspoken. You understand? That's a that's a higher frequency. When you got a community that strong, oh man, that'll make that'll that'll enrage devils all over the place. They'll be sitting there looking. They'll be looking for you then. They'll be like, oh shoot, we we just there's just beep beep beep. There's too much positive energy in this direction. We got to do something about that. There's too much uplifting. There's too much noble spiritual energy right over here. We got to do some. Oh, what? And they tapped it. They're not even in the same vicinity. Brothers over here and sisters over here in the UK and in, in, in Africa and these over here and they're all in the same frequency. They're not even. They're not. Even, it's like the old days. Reach out and touch someone, right? Worldwide spiritual web, just like that. That's how you know you're doing big things when family all across the globe are on the same page, on the same frequency. They're understanding the same pain. You understand? Desiring the same love. That's some deep stuff. That's unity right there. You're not even, we're not, it's not like, you know, you go out of your home, out of your little place or whatever, and you look down the street, like, hey, yeah, that's my friend from around the way. He's, he's, you know, that he, he waves back at you. You guys can see each other, but when you guys are, when you're miles and miles away, water separating you, big ocean separating you, and still you're on the same frequency, yeah, I'll be a modern technology internet, but what I'm talking about is the spiritual energy because there's all kinds of people on the internet right now, but not every not everybody is uh spiritually in tune and on the same plane with each other, so that way they 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 they, they hear this, they feel this, they know this, they see this. You understand? That type of energy, that level. So that's that's how that's how the, that's how these things um they need to be and it, like you said it's like it's like water can you imagine this right here um being a composition of millions of drops of water millions of raindrops and you get this one bottle of water you understand millions of raindrops but all of them you don't even you know suppose that each of the raindrops was still there they, they were still consciously aware of their individualism but because they're together collectively, they work as one whole. You know what I'm saying? They work as one solid whole. You can't make you don't just know you don't know who's the ruler. You don't know who the chief is. You don't know who the, the peasant is. You don't know who you don't know who's who. All you know is is that they're on one accord. That's all you know is that they're on one accord, one frequency, one 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 uh elevative level. And for a good noble cause. An uplifting, nourishing cause. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we got the snow going on here. That other manifestation of unification. So we gotta, we gotta manifest on all levels. We gotta manifest on on all the planes of 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 what this represents. Merkaba. So. <laughs> it makes me think of this brother I knew back in the days. He was so uh, infatuated with the meaning of ba. Every time he would be distressed about something, he was just like ba. <laughs> just out of this ba. Like, brother, you okay? Ba. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He, he, he's liking what he's on right now. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave him alone. Let him let him bask in his, uh, in his um, reverie there. Yes, indeed. So yeah, that's how that we have to just like that, just like just like the the uh, what you know they say the the, the electrolytes, lights you know they they sort of um, revitalize your energies and whatnot. Um, that's another thing when you understand the dynamics of of the, your, your your neural system and everything, how all that works. You know how the the, the energy um, courses through your your nervous system. Um, It is. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's when you when you just really think about how how complex how complex this is, and the fact that you still have these faculties naturally, and that they're this is another thing that's that's this, this distinct between what it means to be a human. Yes, indeed, a human. Exactly. That's 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 why we, that's why I have this particular brand as a reminder. 
of what, you know, of, of those, those who inspired. You understand? That's why I have this particular brand. So Essentia, you guys need to show us some love. Because we sitting there representing you because someone that we love was, rep used, was, was, you know, dip representing as well. So essentially, they need to give us like some coupons or something for something like that. Go ahead and pass some cup coupons around or something. Anyway, you know, yeah, that's, that's, it's, um, oh, what, what I want. I'm basically saying that, you know, we, we, there's a, um, uh, The beasts don't have the same structure of a pineal gland. You know, they say theirs is dried up. It's like a, it becomes hardened in their, in their brains. The same, you have a pineal gland in your, in, in, in the center of your, of, of your brain as well. You understand? But it's, it's, if, if you've been handling it with care throughout your life, it's not hardened. And this being the, uh, key feature. This is our divine antenna, if you will. You understand? This is what connects you to you. <laughs> you understand? You know, you're like, ah, hey, are you there? Oh, yeah, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, well, why are you talking to yourself? Well, who better to talk to than yourself? Because at, at the end of the day, you're going to hear yourself enter this world and hear yourself exit this world. And at the end of the day, when this body returns to the mud, <laughs> you are still you. Tell people this. What do you mean? Aren't you just a, a heart and a liver and a brain and, and, and everything like that? Aren't you just the, you know you know flesh and bones? I say well, maybe you are. You know if you if you shut down if you if you if you, if you're out of your mind, you understand. If you're if you've chosen to become out of your mind, maybe you are just flesh and bones. But the the last I checked, there's an observer in, on the scene. You understand operating this divine machinery that you see that we call the human body. So, you know, Merkaba, 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 the rider, the death of the horse is not the death of the rider. You understand? The death of the horse is not the death of the rider. You understand? Get up, keep on going. Maybe even find a new horse and ride some more. I don't know if you want to ride here anymore. You know, this, this, this one's kind of worn out. These, these people have, have, has, have brutalized this ball, this, this earth. They brutalized this earth. This earth is like, you know what? I can't breathe. You know, my 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 water is, is is just getting messed up. I can't even, you know, I can't even think straight. You know, I'm I'm still wondering how I'm able to rotate on my axis the right way. What on earth is going on? Who put this here? Why did you do this, black man? What you bring these people on the scene for? Why were you get? I know you intelligent. I know you're always trying to experiment and and trying to figure out, you know, how you can uh, best your last action. But these guys you put on the scene, these beasts. What what were you thinking? I thought you said you knew what we didn't know. That's what you last told us. But as I'm looking, all I'm seeing is bloodshed and mischief coming from them. What you want a beast for to do that? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You you don't you know. I don't know. I will say this. I know that we have so so many vari variations of philosophical philosophical viewpoints, spiritual perspectives. All I can tell you is like this. You know, if we communicate, our struggle is to communicate as factually as soundly as possible. So that's the job of the, of the one communicating, um, what they're, you know, what's coming out of their, their word, their mouth. But the listener's job is to, um, scrutinize what's being said in accordance to the tools that they have to make or break or to take or to reject whatever they hear. So whatever is, for whatever goes through your filter system as true, Go ahead and accept it. If this orange juice is better than what you're drinking, why not drink some of this? Have a cup, right? But if you're drinking on some better orange juice, break bread. Because I'm trying to eat and drink. You understand? So, you know, that's how that's how this is on this on in this in this life. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're all trying to rise. And unlike the way of the beast, you know, where it's every man for themselves, that's what they say. Survival of the fittest. 
Whoever the strongest is, if I'm, I'm, I gotta get you out of the way so I can get in the way. I gotta pull you down so I can climb up. That's the way of the beast. But the way of the uh, the way of the divine is more like a more like into a pyramid. You understand? When we, we, we there's going to be someone at the top, regardless. But everybody is holding everybody up to make that happen. And the only reason why he's at the top, you understand, is so he can see a little bit better and tell us, you know, all what what's being observed. You understand? <laughs> yeah, like that. So, you know, but he can't even see unless somebody's holding him up from below. And they can't hold him up unless somebody's holding him up from below. And it keeps on going on. And in effect, they're all seeing, you understand? But they have one at the top representing the the uh, optimum um, observation, if you will. The optimum observation, they all help each other up and imagine that being a ship that goes up and takes everybody up with them. Everybody elevates. Hmm. Might have said too much there. I don't know. Cause that's, that's, that's some heavy stuff our ancestors left behind. You understand? That's some heavy stuff some, that our ancestors, it's like they just wanted to make sure that our abstract minds could continue seeing the whole picture. I gotta make sure that my descendants, because I know how my descendants' minds work. They're inclined to, to, to being, uh, right-brained thinkers. Righteous brain, brained thinkers. They're inclined to thinking righteously. So I gotta make sure they can see well. You understand? I gotta make sure they can see well. So let me go ahead. Let us go ahead. Not only am I gonna tell them where we are right now, where we're kicking it right now, we're chopping it up, passing down the chai and the coffee, the, the chai, the, the, the water, the, you know, the fruit drinks. Man, when are they gonna show up? But, hey, I thought y'all said they was gonna go ahead and get this right. I thought you said they that you knew <laughs> what we don't know. They still down there fooling around with the beast. I don't know. I, I told him I was going to come back, you know, we was going to bring a crew back and go ahead and help them. But I also told him that I'm not going to help anybody until I'm seeing them helping themselves. But right now, all I'm seeing, wait a minute, somebody's twerking? Twerking? Oh my, that's all you could do? I, boss, I thought those was queens down there. Oh man. Yeah, we'll wait a little bit longer before I can go down there. They ain't ready yet. They ain't ready yet. They ain't ready yet. They ain't helping themselves yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh uh let's see what's over here in Andromeda. You know, maybe there's some folks, some family over here that you know that's ready, you know, to talk. Ready to do some business. You understand? You know, maybe one day they'll see the relics, they'll see the monuments that we left behind to remind them of how to make this happen again. See, the thing is, if you look and notice how the beast men work, they're so caught up with their linear, linear way of thinking because they're so left-brained. You understand? They're so caught up with their linear way of thinking that they've got to find some calculation. What did these pyramids... It couldn't have been black people that made these pyramids. It's got to be aliens. Yeah, it's aliens because this is just too great. This boggles our mind. And if we can't think about it because we think we're better than everybody, and since we think we're better than everybody, these guys couldn't have possibly made these things because we can't crack the code. It doesn't dawn upon us that, wait a minute, these designs are features that cater to abstract-minded people, not our, our linear way of mathematics. I'm telling you, silly, silly, silly rabbit, silly rabbit, Trick, tricks are for kids. So, and this is what we're dealing with. And we constantly want to subject ourselves to their linear interpretations of, of science and knowledge. And then we keep wondering why we keep keep getting so, so many rigid uh, uh, interpretations. We keep wondering why when we're standing in front of their justice system, there's no mercy. It's only, I'm just obeying the law, I'm, you're under arrest. I'm following the law. See, the law says, and the next thing you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, um, it, 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 there's a difference between being loyal to law and simply following orders. You understand? There's a difference between blind following, you understand, and being conscious 
You understand? Being intellectually conscious of, of, the, of the laws of nature, the laws of existence, of the laws of the universe. There's a difference. There is. There's a difference. Because one is going to tell you when a person was really trying to steal out of spite, out of, out of you know, uh, ill will, and when someone was struggling just to feed their family. Oh, arrest him. He's a thief. Chop his hand off. Ah! There's a difference. There's a difference. And, you know, it takes a spiritual minded person to be able to see that well. It takes a spiritual minded person, a spiritual, spiritually grounded person to be able to connect with that. And that's why, if you look in ancient history, that's why Set was not in any position to be a leader. He was good at navigating the ship with his linear way of thinking, but Set was not a leader as he thought he was. And he had to be put in his place and put into check because the one who was fit to be leader was the one, Asar, who was the consciousness, who was the heart. You understand? Okay, that's, a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. That's, 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 that's another, you know, that's another uh, class altogether, right? It's another class altogether. It's another ca class altogether. Keep your keep your um, keep your murakaba spinning around. Keep it on its higher uh, vibrations. Keep it elevated. Keep it lifting you up. Keep it protecting you. Yeah, yeah. So, oh man. So uh, you know, I haven't even got to introduce myself. I'm Abdul. Maybe I did. In a way, I introduced myself through other ways than just me simply saying a simple name, Abdul Wadud, meaning servant of the loving divine one. Wapinzi, meaning beloved. Quest man, meaning that one that I'm on, I'm, I'm on a constant journey. I'm on a constant path, you know, where there's all kinds of tasks at hand. Quest everywhere you go, you know. I come from the video game environment, you know. The, you know, my, my upbringing has some, uh, a lot of uh, adventurous video games that I used to enjoy playing. Still do. And you know, quest after quest, and the thing about a quest is that it's always presenting you with some type of challenge, some type of puzzle, some type of code to crack, something you gotta get through, obstacles you gotta climb in order to get the reward at the end. You understand? Quest man, you understand? So, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, beloved black family, we have to have higher, higher, we have to be so, it's, it's, it's optimism, optimism we can do this you understand when you when you um conjure within you those positive energies and replace all kinds of doubt all kinds of fear all kinds of um misery and pain yeah we understand the the trials that we've been through but we want to be a nation right we want to be unified right okay so that means we have to revolutionize our thinking you understand we have to just completely revolutionize our thinking and as one person put it who teaches about the Tao you know you have to replace that negative energy with positive you have to go you have to meditate look in look at wherever there's negative energy going on wherever there's uh, disturbances within you going on and breathe all that out exhale all that out and breathe in as long as you don't have a stuffy nose like mine, breathe in and and meditate on that removing all the, the negative energy, filling it, replacing it with positive, bright, shining, glowing, brilliant, elevating, high frequency energy. You understand? Knowing that is not is not so that when you say you manifest divine authority, you manifest as a king or a queen. You mean it. It's not just a catchphrase. It's, just, it's not just something to, to bolster your ego. Because now you have control over the first, the most important dominion you ever can have control over. Then any external, ex any extension of your dimension, dominion, it becomes easier to obtain. It becomes easier to obtain, not just here. But even elsewhere, on other Earths, on other suns, on other uh, um, uh, galaxies, on other levels, planes of existence, your dominion starts to expand. You understand? You start, you start to metamorphosize and elevate and rise. You start to gain new abilities, new features, new powers. 
You understand? And they, they will one day begin to make stories of you. <laughs> you understand? Of what you use, what you, what you're doing now. Like, oh, did you see what she just did? We didn't know, we didn't know that you could do that. We didn't know that, uh, that, that, that people could do that. But, you know, when you, the higher level you get, you know, you know, I, I, I'd like some people to think about, um, dimensions. And then I'm, I'm gonna carry on with what, what I intended to do. Dimensions, black family. Dimensions. The linear way of putting this, you know, cause a lot of us, we've been so accustomed to taking things in as the beast has taught us. So the beast predominantly teaches linear. That's why they want to put us in some type of special class. Because, well, you guys are slow. No, we just use our right brain. <laughs> you understand? Why well, you are limited to, you know, trying to dissect and, oh, this little piece here and this little part. Well, we see the whole. Our brains are, tra are, 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 are designed to be able to see the whole of a thing. The whole of the matter. You understand? And you know, out of the two, out of the two amongst us, the one who can do it the best is our beloved sisters. <laughs> They're more right brain than anybody on the planet. You understand? They're more capable of seeing things than anybody on the planet. That's why some of your greatest oracles were sisters. Because they had, they could see the, ooh, what, look what I see today. You understand? So, yeah, it's hard when, it's hard when, when you, when, when, um, you're blind in your right eye. I, it's not, I mean, this is prophetic. This is, this is what that, what the, what the, 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 the uh, Hashimi prophet Muhammad called the Adaja. You know what I'm He said he was blind in his right eye. <laughs> Think about that. He's blind in his right eye and his left eye is protruding. This guy's, this, this beast is messed up. No matter who, who, no matter who you want to quote, they all knew the beast was messed up. They all knew the beast was limited and hindered. He kept warning us like, look, I'm trying to tell you, you don't want to mess with these. So, dimensions. Imagine a piece of paper, right? Let's see how I can, I can um, give you this uh, like this. So imagine you have a piece of paper. I want to use this as my good painting paper. This is, this is what I paint with. This is what I paint. I, I draw and paint on stuff like this, you know. Just little things. There's little stuff every now and then. Sometimes I get little bites of inspiration to do something. So I'm not going to use that paper. It's, uh, yeah. Dimensions. Dimensions. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're on this dimension right here. But the, the, the part that you play on this dimension, now I need to find something else. So I got stuff all over the place right now on this desk. I got a pin somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. We'll use this pencil. Use my daughter's pencil, right? Yep, we'll use my daughter's pencil. So imagine you got this paper. This is this is this dot represents your dimension. You're that dot. And imagine you're looking to the right and to the left, forward and backwards. You're looking this way, this way, this way, this way. All you see is one plane. You don't see anything. Everything looks just like you. You, you No matter where you look, everything looks just like you. You understand? All of a sudden, another dot comes on the scene. You now have second dimension, right? Two dots, two perspectives, because it's not just you anymore. It's now your sister. She's on the scene like, hey, brother. Hey, sister, how you doing? <laughs> you know, I, did, I didn't even notice you were over there until just now, right? So now, the two of you form second dimension, right? Form the second dimension, right? But... So now when you see something, when you see anything, everything looks like it's, it's like that. It's, everything looks like a line. Everywhere you go, just a long line here, a long line there. But imagine a friend shows up on the scene and he's still in the fourth, in, in the first dimension. To him, to him, 
You guys just look like, you know, just a, a just blackness in front of him. He doesn't know what the heck is going on. Look, imagine he's he's looking down here. He's looking at what you guys are doing. All he sees is blackness. He don't know what the heck's going on. They can see you. They can tell you are a dot. <laughs> They're looking at, look at that dot. <laughs> look at that dot over there. What's he doing? But that dot is like, why is it black over there? Why do I, everywhere I look, it's just black. What's going on? I'm confused. Right? But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the line that you guys are, the second dimension that you guys are, see something else show up. You understand? You see something else show up. But it's kind of hard to make out what you're looking at. You guys are looking, scratching your head like, hold on. What, what exactly are we looking at here? I mean, it just, you know, it looks like a line, but I mean, I see corners too. I see angles to it. Hold on. We're not done yet. Because I'm going to put another dot right there. You got to bear with me here. And all of a sudden, you see it look like it rises up like a mountain. You see this mountain rise up, right? Remember, you guys were just lines and dots. You're looking at, whoa, what's, oh, what is that, right? What is going on? And that that mountain looks down at you guys like, oh, we got a dot over there. We got a line over there. I must be, you know, the best of them all because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, look at, look at how I am. I can look down. I can see everybody clear. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you got a new thing that goes on here. It's going to be kind of hard, but I'm going to try to do this with a pencil. Okay. Remember, these little dots are representing perspectives. Perspectives, right? Perspectives. That's how angles work. Perspectives. All of a sudden, you see somebody show up and they disappear just as fast as they came. That's how it looked. Anyway, they were there and then they were gone. It's like it was like it's like this. I got a balloon, you know. My daughter, we we're having a little party. This is a balloon. Imagine this. So, so you guys are this 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 at the, at the very least, you guys are a um, a pyramid. But this object shows up. That all you see is like a part of it, and it goes like this. Just like that. That's what you see. Just like that. It's in and it's out. Keywords. In, out. As opposed to up, down, right, left. Right, left. Point. Okay? Try to think about it. That's just four dimensions I'm talking about. We don't even begin to talk about any any, any other dimensions. Our, our, our brains might explode. But my whole point is, it's just to get you to think outside the box or boxes and to try to realize you know mathematics measurement time and space yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you know we gotta we gotta look you gotta look out the right way to understand what I'm talking about here you gotta look out the right way keep you keep your eyes open I know you know this might lose some folks they're like oh this guy's talking some stuff here I don't know what he's talking about let me go ahead and find somebody twerking on, on, on ID real quick because I don't know what this guy's talking about you know um and you find some clown telling silly jokes or something. So that's that's what I'm saying. Just when you can measure it like that, and that's just a that's that's a, that's a, a left brained interpretation of what the right brain already identifies with. You understand? With the right brain, with the with the abstract already identifies with that's that there was a left brain example of the of of trying to say what it means to speak four dimensionally. You understand? This is the direction that our focus should be when it comes to trying to elevate. You understand? When it comes to trying to elevate. And this is th these are the tools that you can use to identify knowing who you are. You understand? In gaining that ability to rise to that knowledge, knowledge of self, versus the, I'm going to say it as uh, Siddhartha Buddha would say, versus the not self. The not self. 
You know what I'm saying? That, that which is not you. You see, here's the, here's how you can know something is not you. Can you cut it? Can you step on it? Can you toss it across the street? You understand? Um, do you, do you have to put something in it? Does it have to be nourished and sustained? If any of these things apply, you're not talking about you. <laughs> you're talking about something. 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 You're talking about that. But, the minute you begin to subtract something, when you say, uh, uh, two minus one equals one, you understand? You're taking things away until you, you have nothing. No thing. No thing. You, me, I, we, not a thing. You understand? We manifest the form of things. You know how biblically or biblically or chronically says, and the, the, the being came in the form of a hmm. Well, previously it wasn't in the form of anything. Until it manifested in the form of a whatever it was. You are a human. I am a black human. I'm, I'm a being manifesting the form of a black human. And why is this important to know? Because one, first of all, you know that your form is celestial anyway. You understand? It's, it's sustained by the nature of this environment. This is a natural environment for this form to be. How do you know? Take a deep breath. And then see if you can give me the answers. See if you, see if you discovered the answer for that. Um, you know, when you get hungry, look around for your next meal through, through the different herbs, through the different things that are harmonious with your form. You understand? Operate properly. Operate properly. So, anyway, I just wanted to, you know, shove a little bit of, you know, a four dimensions in your, you know, dimension in your face a little, real quick. Um, I did, uh, promise that I would continue reading The Destruction of Black Civilization. So I'm going to go ahead with that. Every now and then, I like to throw some, um, some hard rocks and stones at you know. Don't forgive me for stoning anybody. If 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 it if it if it hit hard, you know, I'll try to pass you a band-aid on or something, you know. But um that's the way life is. You know, I never I've never seen a friendly fire. You understand? You know, we we negotiate and you know our meal gets cooked. But the minute you put your hand in that fire you see how friendly that fire is. And it don't care if it's you or if it's me or if it's a beast man or anybody. It's going to treat you all the same. That's the way facts are. That's the way the truth is. It treats you all the same. It doesn't make any discrimination. If you jump off a cliff, you bite the dust. If a devil jumps off the cliff, he bites the dust. Whoever jumps off a cliff, they bite the dust. You understand? Poisonous snake will bite you poison you, poison anyone, same results, same end results. So there's no discrimination when it comes to the truth. You know, and that's the that's that's the thing that has to be considered. That's the thing that has to be understood when it comes to trying to unify. When it comes to trying to be on one accord is what in what way are we all subject to the same divine laws? That can't be reinterpreted, misinterpreted, um, ignored. That it's universally true no matter what book you open up, no matter what eye you look out of, no matter what mathematical system you use, no matter what language you speak. Because this is the truth. You understand? This is the truth. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, 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 a element of uh, knowledge that it, it doesn't it doesn't make room for any you know uh, opinions if you explore what, what what what's being talked about here and in order to explore that the, the 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 person has to be receptive so anyway destruction of black civilization and if you're wondering where we left off we are on page 301 we're beginning with that paragraph there 301 Mm -hmm. Unification, black family, unification. Even, even if you, if you ponder this in any kind of metaphor that you can think of, unity, there's no, there's nothing that can replace it. There's nothing, there's no other solution. 
other than being unified. You understand? I know many of us, we have this um, solar mentality. <laughs> what do I mean by solar mentality? We think like the sun, meaning we think independently. You know, I can shine my own light. You understand? I can radiate my own radiance. You understand? I can develop my, establish my own orbit. You understand? This is the, this tends to be our mind as a people because you know we're we, this is this is the the nature of this is our nature. But the thing is, is when you zoom out a little bit more, you realize that the sun isn't truly too independent after all. That it's equally independent and dependent. You understand? And not only is it independent and dependent. Is part of a, a greater system. It's involved with a greater system of unity. And when that greater system of unity is acknowledged, you have a galaxy. You understand? You have a galaxy, my friend. Beloved black family, you have a galaxy. And even it, it still goes on further from there. So you see that there's, it's always stronger when we're unified. It's always stronger, even though we have this, this innate feature of being independent minded. Our greatest strength is when all that's put together, unified and unity. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no other solution. If you're looking for some other solution, if you're thinking on this, you're on this rock all by yourself, you're not going to win. You're not going to succeed that way. Period. You might, you might have some temporary success, but when it comes to the whole picture, especially if you leave behind seeds, you understand? If you leave behind seeds and you haven't even stood up to represent a right, a righteous cause, you've only made it harder for your seeds and now they've got to pick up where you left off. Like, dang on, look at what our father left us in. Look at the mess he left us in. We got to clean this up? We got to fix this? And he didn't even tell us, he didn't even give us no instructional tools because all oh, he's, he's all independent and he, he doesn't need anybody. You know, I'm, I don't follow anybody. I don't need a leader. I don't know. Nah, nah. Yeah, that's why we are like we are now. You know, uh, when the Chinese come over here, they follow their hierarchy. They follow their system. When anybody comes over here doing their thing, establishing their own community, <laughs> they have a system. They have rank and file. They have and they have uh, 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 an infrastructure. Only us. Only only we're only we're over here sitting there. Well, I don't need anybody. You know. I, I know. I'm, I'm. You know. You know. I run this city. <laughs> you really? You do? What? 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 You run? You 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 controlling the offices? You controlling the uh, the marketplaces? The economy? What are you doing besides sitting on your front porch? Yeah, but this is, so we got, we got, we, we, this is where the linear aspect of the brain comes in, mind you, where we have to think, we have to, this is balance. Yeah, it's good to see the whole picture. It's good to have confidence. It's good to be, to be, uh, uh, optimistic about your, your, your abilities. But you have to balance it with the, ma the manifest reality that you exist in. And we exist with an adversary. We exist with various challenges. We exist in a way that we have to be a community. You understand? We have to operate as a community. And we exist in a way where because of the nature of our procreation and how we continue to uh, um, evolve and move forward in our existence, we have to be able to establish a, a society that benefits us now and those who come later. We can't ignore that. We can't act like somehow, you know, because otherwise we're divine deadbeats. <laughs> Some you understand we're divine deadbeats if we do that. We're 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 living and existing and benefiting, but having no regard of those who come after us. You understand? We're not paying our divine child support. <laughs> Think about that. We're not you're not giving your divine nourishment. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I know this this is a, this is silly 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 talk here for 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 the, for many you know for many, but you know most know not, most most know not, you know most know not. So you know if you're surprised that that masses you know you don't see this where it's masses it shows thousands of people, you no know, you have your you have your uh, answer why. Um, before I begin. 
I want to remind you, if you're interested in supporting Soul Journey of Life, you can do that with the Cash App at the Light Dome. That's the Cash App, the Light Dome. You could do that at uh, PayPal. That's Soul Journey of That's uh, PayPal.me Soul Journey of Life. Um, or directly on souljourneyoflife.org and then go to the uh, support us tab and provide your support there as well. Um, so your support helps in numerous ways, not to mention keeping the, the platform Soul Journey of Life, conscious black social media, afloat and remaining and existing. Um, this is ours, it's for us, so if it means something to us, then it only makes sense that we support our own and keep it existing, because if we don't do it, nobody else is going to. What, we, you, oh, you, you thought I was going to go to the beast man and get some support. No, it's, it's not that kind of party. So, you know, it's either going to come from us, or it's not going to come at all. Plain and simple. You know, so my petition is always going to be at ones that look like like me, you know, that, 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 uh, that understand that the plight that, that I'm in and that we are in as a people. That's where the petitions are going to, uh, be directed. So, with that said, the other, uh, direction that I would like to point our wallets are at the GoFundMe page of the, um, of uh, Brother Grandmaster J. The Grandmaster J Legal Defense Fund. Go ahead and make sure you you know spill some of your uh, your your falus, your 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 uh, money there. Current balance thirty one seven forty seven dollars. Make sure you put some notes of some some uh, elements there, um, and pretty much anybody that's suffering in the community, high and low. You know, saying those suffering at the bottom level that people seem to just continually forget about, and those you know uh, that that are suffering on, on greater levels, like legal levels and things like that. We need to help our own. Long story short, we need to help our own. Yeah. So there's that. Also, we could remind ourselves um, that. Uh, oh, let's see here. We can remind ourselves, I believe it's on the 26th, I was trying to find the post that I put up, I believe it's on the 26th that um, the first uh, court date regarding uh, Grandmaster J is being held. And, and so, you know, that's a matter that it, it seems imperative that, that if you are about standing up for justice... That if ever there was a time to protest, if ever there was a time to stand up and, 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 and let it be known that, hey, you know, there is a wrong happening here and we see it. There is a clear, blatant wrong happening here and we see it. So, yeah, the 26th of the month of February. So you want to mark that on, on your calendar. Wherever you may be, those who are able to, let's be there. Let's show, show support. Let's show unified support so that they know that this isn't just a brother that's in all, you know. Can you imagine, you know, you've been supporting 3,000, 4,000 people, millions of, millions of people all across the land, representing a, a, a greater cause, and then you get hemmed up. As soon as you get out your car to go to the court and there's nobody there, but, but like a handful, like 20, or wait a minute, let me, let me be more specific. 339 donors. 339, can you imagine that? You see only three, you, you've been talking to millions of people, but only 339 people show up. It can't be like that. It can't be like that. We, there's, I know, I know there's gotta be real thorough, thoroughbred brothers and sisters out there who, you know, are about that cause. Who are about that cause. It's gotta be. It's gotta be real ones. We, I know, I know, we, I know, the, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. So I know that the most of us aren't fake. I know that the most of us aren't hypocritical. I know that the most of us aren't, you know, cowards. You understand? I know that the most of us aren't idiots. And I know that the most of us don't want to be divided. 
and don't want to be uh, uh, a, a non-nation. You understand? The most of us. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you know the presence, you know, gives sort of it, it gives a message. You understand? It lets you, it lets observers know that you know we're not silent. We're not um, blind to this matter. We're not you know. Um, is not going past us. You understand? We see. Ah, oh, my, my son's up there just complaining. Him and his sister, they start getting into it. He doesn't like seeing people um, eating along with him. <laughs> so, you know, it's a matter of teaching him how to share, how to realize that, hey, you know, we're a family. We, we live together, we eat together, you know, one family. But right now, he's still a baby. He sees the, oh, she's eating what I'm eating, but whatever she's eating looks like it's better than, how dare she eat what I'm eating? Only I can eat what I'm eating. It's all mine. Anyway, we, 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 you know, these are things that, you know, ideally we grow out of once we start getting an understanding of the importance of unity. But some of us, in the black community haven't grown out of that yet some of us haven't grown out of that yet we're still crying when we see another brother eating well we're, we still cry like oh how's he eating and I ain't I gotta cry about that I gotta do something about that how's he got 3,000 strong marching along with him and I can't even get 25 people all I could do is get a bunch of people following me on YouTube or something, and that's about it. But the minute I start to mark, nobody's going to show up. But he's he does it in a short period of time, gets, gets three, four, or five thousand people, and he still got the he still got them on his team. How he do that? You know, this is, this is you know, some of us haven't grown out of that yet. Some of us haven't grown out of that yet. Some of us haven't realized that. Look, you know. We want family, you know, we, we eat together, we live together. <laughs> we got to get along in this way. So, page 301, the destruction of black civilization. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So, let us begin. Page 301, a view from the bridge. What then is the view from the bridge? The outlook is grim. From the black people of the world, there is no bright tomorrow. The blacks may continue to live in their dream world of singing, dancing, marching, praying, and hoping because of the deluding signs of what looks like victories. Still trusting in the ultimate justice of the white man, but a thousand years hence, their descendants will be substantially where the race was a thousand years before. For the white people, still masters of the world, do not have to yield. They have never changed their real attitude toward black people during all the passing centuries, and there is absolutely nothing upon which to base the belief that they will change in the centuries to come. Concessions on some demands, yes, especially... Uh, no, concessions on some demands, yes, expediency dictates this, noting that the black masses accept as leaders any and all Negroes who hold important positions, the whites who control these positions directly or indirectly actually determine who the leaders of blacks shall be as independent black organizations emerge. The dangling attractions of government and foundation grants are there to quiet the outspoken but money-hungry leaders. Indeed, some of these leaders were quick in discovering that the most certain route to a handsome grant or loan is pretended outrage and shouting militancy. The whites now this the whites know this all too well. They are quite willing to pour millions of dollars into all kinds of black community projects precisely because they know that these phony leaders will do nothing that will really improve the conditions under which the black masses live. Mm. 
blacks are still hopelessly naive and if they do not under do not yet understand that the that the whites never did and do not now intend to include blacks in the doctrine of humanity in the doctrine of human equality equal justice or anything else that means real equality the white determination to keep blacks in an inferior position is so deep that they will battle against the enactment of civil rights laws even when they know there will be no real enforcement. The opposition is to the very idea of equality. Those Negroes who are so fanatic, fanatically fighting to escape from the African race by way of integration and amalgamation will continue to meet everlasting and universal universal opposition from whites from the whites the negroes drive to be with whites in every situation is all it is ah the negro drive to be with whites in every situation is equaled by the white determination to prevent it Yet the whites must truly feel a deep sense of pride in seeing this Negro leadership so clearly validating their own belief in white superiority, their pretended quality education object objective actually collapses under the wheels of buses for racial racial balance. They are, pro they are proclaiming to all the world that regardless of general dis uh, desegregation in any all black and predominantly black populations, the blacks themselves are utterly incapable of achieving or maintaining high standards of excellence in education or indeed anything else. Here we have, within the race, the intolerable situation of an anti-black group proclaiming the race the race's inherent inferiority more effectively than the whites ever could, precisely because this group is regarded as black. Furthermore, and even of more of greater importance, the amalgamationist Negroes generally hold most of the administrative and key teachings post in the educational system. Through sheer indifference, therefore, they can block the development of the quality of education in black schools while at the same time sending their own children to white private schools. Their remaining interest in the black schools is the money derived from their supervisory and teaching positions. <clears throat> Meanwhile, black students in the so-called integrated schools and colleges throughout the United States continue to tell the world that they are as segregated within as they are without. Far from being accepted, daily insults of various kinds occur inside the classrooms, in the halls, and on the outside. When fights break out, as they inevitably do, and the police are called in, they generally arrest the black students, not the white students, no matter who started the trouble. A press report, September 15, 1972, simply read, During the recess hour, a black male student was called an offensive name by two white boys and pushed against the wall. The, a general fight broke out between black and white students. Police were called. Thirteen black students were arrested and jailed. Now, of course, all the public information and news to... Now, of course... All this is public information and is news to no one, but some of the salient facts that seem to stand out clearly are as follows. One, white America is definitely and unalterably opposed to the integration and amalgamation of the two races. Two, black America, the masses are equally opposed to the integration and amalgamation of the races. Three, the drive for more and more amalgamation is and always has been spearheaded by those coloreds who maintain a separatist society within the black race and who are not and never have been identified with the black masses. For since everybody knows that there are millions of light skinned members of the race, some of the white as some as white as any Caucasian who are as African in spirit and are as devoted to the race as anyone else, the crucial question is how long will this other white oriented group be allowed to block the real progress of the race? Five, 
Those who seek and hope for the admittance into white society should not be criticized or condemned. As previously stated, it is an individual matter of choice, and it is both natural and right if their blood call is to the white race rather than to the black. But they cannot be allowed to use their imposed leadership positions to browbeat all black Americans into the line of march toward white society per se and thus toward the ultimate extinction of blacks as such in this country. It is also, it is along this line against their benign genocide that the real battle for survival as a distinct people must be fought. Six, the drive for integration is most damnable on one score alone. It is a deliberate and stepped up attack on the most significant aspects of the black revolution of the 60s. The revolt was the reversal in the psychology of the race, a quest for its lost manhood for by first e emancipating the mind from the bondage of over Caucasianization and to establish forever the real basis for equality with the rest of mankind from the rediscovered pages of history that was supposed to be lost because it reveals a long line of giants unsurpassed by any people on the earth. The Negro integrationists are hostile to the black revolution and aim to defeat its main aims by forcing the black children and youth of the nation more directly under white education. Once again, as in slavery, they will be cut off not only from the history of their race, but they will be also cut off from a knowledge of all the other fields in which blacks have excelled and from which comes the inspiration to go forth and do likewise. The great mental revolution among the blacks that eventuates in more and more self-respects and a new sense of manhood and self-worth, all this alarms the Negro integrationists and they are resolved to defeat it by keeping the blacks firmly under the mind control of white institutions. 7. They are absolutely right about the general lack of quality education in black schools, the very schools in which they are the principal supervisors and teachers, but their minds and interests are elsewhere. Ghetto children are unteachable. They assure themselves. And they are and they and their equally misguided principals and teachers of all kinds will fight to the death a Clark or any other plan that is express, express, expressly designed to improve the teachings and learning pra processes in black schools. They fear the very idea of community control because it presents the possibility that irate Parents might demand the removal of the merely job-holding and indifferent principals and teachers. 8. The millions of Africans of mixed blood who have always been steadfast and devout to the race know that when the white man gives them a preferential status above the unmixed but always below himself, he, is, he does so to maintain the myth of superior white blood. Their redemption from the sin of African blood is proportionate to the amount of white blood in their veins. Indeed, if one is light enough or near white, he may even be appointed secretary of, de of a department of the U.S. government and a member of the president's cabinet and still not equal. Furthermore, with America, furthermore, white America has found that their purposes were served best by classifying as Negro all persons with an any amount of African blood, no matter how small. This obvious injustice has never been openly challenged even by those directly affected and who bitterly resent being so classified. But the United States refused to follow either the South African system of making their Afro-Dutch offspring a separate ethnic group by law and calling them coloreds, or the ancient practice of Egypt and the Arab world of classifying mixed breeds as white. This fact has had a tremendous impact on integrationist Negroes in the United States, leading many to identify with the Arab world rather than Africa and even to opt, even to adopt Arabic names rather than African names. In fact, because of their powerful hold on Africa through the religion of Islam and the vast colored population in many Arab states, many white Arabs will publicly state for African ears that they are non-white people. 
However, even if the United States did, did attempt to reclassify this group as either white or colored, the millions who are bound to the African race by unbreakable ties of love would fight such a move to its death. These have no desire to be either white or colored, for like the late Congressman Adam Clayton Powell, who could have passed for white anywhere in the world, they would say, call me black. Knowing full well that black refers not to anyone's color, for which none is responsible, but black defines one's attitude towards the homeland of his ancestors, which from times immemorial was called the land of the blacks. Something different developed in black America for, whereas in most other parts of the world, the mulattoes formed an elite caste this is true only in certain groups in the United States, such as the Wizards of Maryland and Virginia, also known by other names, and their spillover in Washington, D.C. In general, the, divide, the, the divided loyalties split them as anti-African and pro-African, which is the way it has, the way it always has been. The view of the bridge thus far has been a refocus of the futility of our continuing and childlike faith in the white man's justice and belief that our protests, marching demonstrations, singing and praying would change his 6,000 years of hostility to us, and that the Negroes, who frantically battle for admission to white suburbia and to its private clubs, golf courses, swimming pools, etc., will never be welcomed even though they may be near white in color. The final focal point in this connection is that the masses, from the blackest of the blacks to the lightest of the lights, do not care at all about social mixing with the whites. They, the whites on their part, have no reason or inclination to do more than make token concessions from time to time, thus quieting noisy leaders, but never changing the inferior situation of the masses. They still own and control the wealth of Africa directly or and indirectly, and from it, along with that from other areas of the world, they have developed te technologies in a world, of commer uh, in a world commerce, all fully protected by governments, also under their control, that assure them of continued white supremacy. This phenomenal success, this unquestionable position of strength derived from their conquest of other peoples and their wealth had led them to believe that they are, as a matter of fact, the superior people and therefore the rightful rulers of the planet. Why then should they be expected to yield? Human rights? Equal justice? What are these but uh, narcotic slogans for the masses, even the white masses, which are quickly conceded as ideals and principles everywhere. The masses of poor whites also live on these slogans and ideals of equal justice. They are a pitiful people, often half starved themselves, yet living and having their being in the happy thought that they are members of the white conquering white race, and that the once enslaved blacks among them are living evidence of their own superiority. They enjoy the glory reflected from the domination and power achieved by the ruling minority of their race. Too ignorant to realize that they are used as the tools of hate to support their wealth and power concentrated in relatively few hands. When these poor whites secure the kinds of jobs that move them up in the glory land called middle class, they get the most concrete evidence of their innate superiority. They find that the economic system is so structured that one, to secure the better jobs and advancements, the number, the number one qualification is to be white. Two, that even where only a token number of non-whites are employed, they may be required to have college degrees and sometimes the masters, while the higher salaried whites, including the supervisors, may not have a high school education. These are not merely may or may not theories. In the United States, the official statistics show that nationwide black college graduates not only earned $1,040 a year less than the, the white, than white high school graduates, but they earn less than a, a white 10th grader. Hmm. The white college graduates 
average $3,095 more than the black college graduates. Three, blacks must pay more to live than whites. The lower wages they receive and the higher prices they must pay are built in guarantees that they will always occupy an inferior place in the society. Merchants now generally have two prices for the same goods, one black and one white. With the uneducated blacks, they are having a field day. They are equally successful in robbing the uneducated black middle class because of its abiding faith and status striving complex. These are the Negroes who readily pay $225 a month for a house just vacated by whites who rented it for only $125. And Negroes who buy 25 grand homes listed to the, to whites for the for from 5,000 to 10,000 10, less, provided, of course, that white folks previously lived there. And the inner city food markets charge higher prices for cheaper brands of canned goods and equally high prices for leftovers from their first class stores in surrounding white suburbia. And for the insurance companies face this economic war on the blacks boldly and uh, I can't read this word right here. It's too blurred. I'm going to say that it's actuality. That's what it looks like. It's, it's got a, a blur in it. They simply charge blacks more and more for less benefits. Blacks must pay much higher premiums than the whites for life insurance, for example, because it has been determined that their life expectancy is 10 years less than that of whites. For the insurance industry, it is a strict, it is strictly a matter of business. They know that the total economic system is so structured against the blacks that it is impossible for them to maintain proper health standards. Being black, they must die first by 10 years. All this gives comfort and assurance to the poor and once poor salient majority. They feel that they have every reason to be silent for does not this silence and secret war against the blacks carried on every hour of their existence and deeply structured into in the very fabric of national life, public and private, does this not reassure them every day that they are indeed members of the supreme ra ruling race? The view from the, from the bridge had to focus first on the United States because so much points to this land as the place where the first major racial explosion is likely to occur. One would think that South Africa feels more secure with huge American investments and military backing than America itself. Mm -hmm. A view of the motherland. This brings us to the main reason for the focus of, on America. It quickly assumed the role of the world, the whole white West as the various powers were forced from their imperial rule in Asia and Africa. Forced, that is to say, from direct political rule or the political functions of colonialism. The world at large in the greatest mis in the greatest misconception of modern times took this to mean African independence at last. African freedom and the end of European colonialism. This plain truth, the plain truth is that the African states today are not even half free and independent. For colonialism was from the beginning exactly what it is today, an economic system for the control and exploitation of the wealth of other peoples. It was and it is a private enterprise system. Colonial government was initially company government. When the political task got too big because of the increasing rivalries between the great powers, the mother countries would appoint colonial governors and other administrators. In other words, government by the home country came in as a protecting umbrella for the main objective, economic exploitation. That ec that economic control still prevails all over Africa. It is not neo-colonialism, but the old colonialism itself still carrying on under the beautiful and high-flying flags of independence of independent African nations. The various mineral resources are so vast and involve so many billions of dollars that individual Africans call upon to decide whom they will serve. 
their people or the masters of the country's wealth often decide to serve the latter. The fact that Africa is still in economic bondage to her former political masters brings us back to our point of departure. As the more political colonial as the more political colonialism disappeared, the United States rushed in to fill the breach. To take up the banner as the leader of the free world, the Atlantic or Western powers, the American military bases scattered all over the world have meaning far beyond any supposed communist threat. Rich European nations no longer need to maintain their usual armies for defense for their great white brother, Uncle Sam, will gladly draft men to keep American forces there. American armed might is everywhere. Ready to push, or ready to rush in to play the self-assigned role. This new world mission of the United States replaces, as far as it can, the more direct rule of the Western powers over the non-white peoples. The, thre the threat to black Africa and black people everywhere should be obvious. From the very beginning, for example, the American secret policy was to give little or no assistance to Africa. Outright grants, such as the billions poured into Europe, were never expected by the black nations. The Africans had sense enough to know that such free gifts were for whites only. But they did expect to secure loans on reasonable terms of repayment. The American attitude of loans to African, African states turned out to be about the same as it would have been if they had been begging for free grants. There was a very definite African policy, however. The policy was not to announce the policy. There was a public announcement of what was intended as a policy early in the 1960s. It is said to Africa, in effect, that the United States will continue its friendly interest and, as always, said little or nothing in the matter of loans. Other friendly advice included the well-known information that they could apply to the World Bank. The big American the big American air and military base in Ethiopia made it a favor favorable African state like Libya. American investments in two of the in two other African states enabled them to secure loans. Black nations that might overcome the foreign economic stranglehold within their countries by increased production and exports for foreign exchange find their export trade blocked by the tariff walls on the tariff walls of mm, Say this again. Black nations that might overcome the foreign economic stranglehold within their countries by increased production and export for foreign exchange find their export trade blocked by the tariff walls of the same United States and the same European powers whose industrial machines would be crippled without the wealth, mineral resources, and basic, basic strategic materials they still control and ship out of Africa. In a word, the blacks neither own nor control the wealth of their own land. Supposedly free again, they are unable to rebuild even as a well, even as well as their migrating forefathers did before the Arab and European conquest. As shown in previous chapters, freed of the white men's control, a control from which most of them were fleeing, they were overriding all obstacles and successfully building and rebuilding new states until they were finally overtaken in the 19th century, in the 19th and as late as the beginning of the 20th century. The overall view from the bridge, then, is simply the view of where and how the black people of the world stand today after a summary review of at least 6,000 years of their history. And whether the focus is on Africa, the Caribbeans, the Americas, or elsewhere, they are now seen standing at the crossroads of history and confused. Beloved Black family, that concludes chapter 12. Um, God so willing, uh, we will continue at a later date. Um, chapter 13, which is titled The Black Worlds at the Crossroads, and that begins on page 310. With that said, I want to remind you um, that, you know, to, uh, I petition that you help and support the cause and the efforts that are being taken here. Um, you can do that by donating to 
the cash app, the light dome. You can donate to the paypal.me at the forward slash soul journey of life. Paypal.me forward slash soul journey of life. Um, you can also make sure that if you haven't yet, that you've migrated, left behind Facebook or whoever, and join SoulJourneyOfLife.org, the conscious black social media. And you can even provide support there directly using the support us link there. Um, I want to encourage us to continue to further our advancement and our efforts to be a unified people, to ignore all naysayers, to disregard the content, their weak mindedness, and to strengthen our own minds, you understand, in our own hearts with intellect and love for one another. So with that said, my name is Abdul Wadud, also called Wapenzi, also called Quest Man. And I bid you salam alaikum, shalom, peace be with you, hotep, and have a blessed evening, beloved, beloved black family. Mm -hmm. Take care.